Hello artists. I am so excited for this one. I feel like drawing this mandrel baboon is really fun and everybody has success. So I'm really excited to do this. I have done this in the past with just one group of second graders. Um, if you came upon this video and you were that group of second graders, then that just means you get to be an expert at this one. So here is the finished picture. And you can see that not only does this baboon have symmetry, but there's also a lot of texture involved. The way that it's colored helps to make it look really furry, hairy even, okay? So there'll be two different ways that we're gonna color it. So for this one, you need that piece of paper. And then when I said you needed something to color with, I meant something like a box of crayons. That's what I'm gonna be using. You could also use markers. That's probably my, um, my, second choice after crayon because crayon is going to give you a variety of color or if you are lucky enough to have a set of oil pastels um, at your house that would be a great thing to use because these blend together really well so if you have oil pastels I would use those as my first absolute choice but I am going to use crayon okay so I'm going to switch cameras so you can see my drawing and we'll do this together Okay, here we are. This is the final project. So I wanted you to see all the colors I'm using here. So you could have those at the ready. If you don't have a box that's all set up like this, you might just have your crayons in a place uh, in your art box. And I wanna tell you which ones to get out. So first up, you can just use all the colors that you're seeing in my picture. That is black and brown also yellow and peach lots of neutrals here white and for the brighter colors we're using orange as well as red and violet red and pink and then two different blues. So you don't have to use the colors I just said. You can use a variation of those. So red or a reddish color, pink or a pinkish color, okay? And then you just wanna pick a dark blue and a lighter blue. So grab those out. And I'm gonna do a little test with my blues, I think, on the back of my paper. So here's my project piece. And just uh, when I check colors, I always just use the back. I want to see what this blue looks like next to this blue that I chose. I think those will be good for our picture. Now, something that I think will help you is if you fold the paper in half, that'll give you the middle line. And that's where we're going to start. It's like right in the middle of our paper. So fold your paper in half and then open it back up. That's going to give you the middle we just want to line so we can know where to start our nose. So we're going to start out with the pinks and reds, and we're going to draw this big pinkish reddish nose of our mandrel baboon. They are a totally interesting looking animal. If you have a chance to get with a grown up and look up some pictures of a mandrel baboon, I highly recommend it. They're pretty, pretty good characters. They actually show their teeth when they're happy is what I read about them, it, even though that makes them look incredibly ferocious. So we are gonna start out with a big skinny letter U and it's gonna start right on the fold and it's gonna, oh, I guess it's truthfully an upside down U. Um, so let's think of it instead of a U as like a rainbow. So a tall skinny rainbow to come back down like that. And I'm using my red, but you can use um, your darker pink. And then at the bottom, we're gonna put this big round circle. And you want it to be symmetrical, so you just wanna be able to eyeball it. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And now we're gonna start to color that in. We're gonna use our lighter pink to make a highlight on the bridge of the nose. Now, if you're using Craypaw for this, you might hold off on this particular part because you wanna do that probably with white. So I'm making the highlight down the bridge of the nose to make it look like it's sticking up a little bit higher than the rest of the nose. And then I'm gonna follow 
the curve of this with my pink just to show that this is like the top of this guy's nose. And I might add more later, I'm not certain yet. Then I'm gonna go back in with my darker pink, which in my box, it's called Violet Red. And I'm gonna color right along the outside of that nose that I created, that highlight with the pink. Now I'm gonna go pretty fast. I want you to remember that you can pause the video and catch up with me. This is not the first time I've drawn a mandrel baboon, so I don't want you to get discouraged if you're not as quick as me. Just push pause. If you need, you can rewind. Um, use the tools that are on your device. And then I'm gonna use the darkest red I have to make the nostrils here. And I'm gonna color over them with pink too, just so it all kind of goes together. Lots of mixing of colors but I want his nostrils to look like they are holes in his nose, right? So I'm also gonna go back in again with my um, violet red, just to make, it's almost like a little tornado underneath his nose right now. I like to use those jagged edges when I'm coloring things because I can blend the colors better if the edges are all jagged like that. Now I'm gonna use red to color lightly all the way around the rest of the nose that I have here. And I wanna try and blend my red into those parts that I colored with the darker pink. And you'll notice that I'm coloring for shape. So I have this big swoopy shape down at the bottom and I'm coloring it in like it is a swoopy shape. So just like mimicking this line down here with my coloring, that helps you give your piece of artwork something called form. And that means it doesn't look like a shape anymore. It looks like a three dimensional form. So you're showing some depth. That's what the third dimension is, is depth. I hope I'm not covering up my work too terribly much for you to see either. I know that I talked about this before, but Huck is like right over there laying down on the ground. Maybe I'll give him a little cameo here at the end of our lesson. He likes to just stay by me all day long. He's kind of loving the fact that we're all home all the time. He might be a little bit tired of the, the kids. They're kind of noisy. You might hear them. They're upstairs right now. They've been given strict instructions not to bother their mom, but you never know what you might need from a mom. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna create some extra dark points inside of the nostrils. So I'm just gonna make a little skinny hot dog shape at the tip top of those dark nostrils to help him look like he has a shadow right in there. I might even go back in again with my red and just kind of color over that black a little bit and make this a bit darker. And then if you're feeling like you can't see this highlight, you could definitely go back and add some white. I don't know how much of a difference it'll make with crayon, but I know that it'll help a lot if you're using Craypaw, okay? So now this should all be colored in like really nice and smooth. You can go back in and recolor this part so it's nice and dark. This is the most fun part of the mandrel because it's so incredibly colorful. And one of my tips for coloring is if you're not getting a nice flat color down, especially with crayon, then what you wanna do is take some extra paper, just a couple of extra sheets of paper and you can place it underneath your workspace and when you do that it's just going to give you a little bit oh i accidentally grabbed my red violet that's okay i was going to mix those colors anyway right happy mistake so then when you're coloring and you have that paper underneath look at how flat and uh, saturated that color is even better than over here so i think that that's a really great idea when we're doing the nose because you want the nose to look smooth. That's what we're going for here. This part of him doesn't have the fur that the rest of him does. So we're interested in mimicking that smoothness for our texture. And we wanna go back and just do the same everywhere so that we have that symmetry that we're looking for. Remember, symmetry is the same on both sides and you wanna really try and 
make that come through. So that would be now my red violet on top of my red. I'm just going to get rid of some of my crayon crumbs there. And then going back over my red violet, that was all by itself. And you can just keep reworking this until it looks like you want it to look. Especially if you had a chance to look up a mandrel baboon before we got started. Or you could pause it right now and look up one. I'm going to do the same thing with my pink. Okay, so now we've got this nice smooth nose ready to go and I am ready to add the next layer of things. Now we can take this extra paper out. I want you to know that the next parts are to be furry. So keep that in mind as we, as we doodle. Um, we're going to start though with the last of the smoothness and that's going to be his eyes and they're going to go just outside of the nose space. I'm going to make it about the size of a pea that you would eat for dinner. I would not eat a pea for dinner because I don't like peas. <laughs> I'm going to put another one over on the other side. Remember we're going for symmetry. And those are just the pupils. So now we're going to use a dark orange and trace around the outside. We want it to look nice and smooth. So you're trying to get nice solid color. I'm going to circle around the pupil that I made because that's going to help add again to the form, which is this round eye shape. Be careful that if you're using crayon, you don't color over that black because it's going to smear into the orange. But if it does, you can make that work for you. Accidents happen when we're making art and that's okay. Masterpieces happen when we have accidents too. Now, we've got eyes, we've got a nice smooth nose. Now we're gonna work into that, those blue cheeks that happen on the outside of his nose. So with your dark blue first, we are gonna create um, the outside edges of the cheeks. We're gonna do the one on the left hand side first, but I want you to turn your paper upside down. I, yes, I do want you to turn your paper upside down. You know me, I think, as we work. So we're gonna draw a little bump here and then you're gonna make the letter J. So one little bump, letter J. And I'm gonna press for this part nice and hard. Okay, now what you wanna do is that same design on the other side. If you want it to be exact, let me show you a cool trick. You're gonna fold your paper in half And then I just want you to use your blue crayon and draw right over that line that you had already made. I'm going to scribble back and forth on it. This is a cool trick on like copying of your own work here. So once I've done that, when I open it up, I should see, you can barely see it, but I see the outline of what I drew on this side, but now I see it here. So I'm just going to trace over that so that I have that symmetry that I was hoping for. Okay, now we'll turn them back this way. And they have some cool markings that are still that dark blue color that kind of go through these blue cheeks that they have. They go from the nose and kind of up and out. It almost reminds me of butterfly wings, especially when we're talking about symmetry. So what I'm going to do is start down farther and then arch up into the cheek space. And they're kind of tight over on this side and get loose as they move out towards the sides of his face. Okay. And what you want to do is just make both sides the same to help with that symmetry. You can use that same trick that I just showed you also to make sure that it's symmetrical. I'm kind of paying attention to where this is in reference to that little fold mark. Now I'm going to color this in with my lighter blue color. 
But first, I'm just going over these lines and pressing really hard. You can hear the wax of my crayon going clink each time I'm done because I was pressing so hard. Now, when I go into color the cheeks, I'm going to press light. If you don't have two blues, then all you'll do is press really hard that first part. And then when you're coloring in, you'll just press really lightly. And that'll give the illusion that you actually do have two different blues. If you remember back, way back in the Wayback Machine, that's called value. Each crayon has three values. One for pressing really hard, that gives you the nice shade, right? And two, coloring with it regular. And three, coloring with it really lightly, that gives you the tint. Okay. From here, we're going to move into the fur, and you can get really creative with this. I'm going to do a couple of anchor pieces first, and then I'm going to let you go for it on the coloring. The first anchor piece is going to be his big, giant eyebrow, and you'll notice I said eyebrow. That's just the one. So they seem to have kind of right up here above their eyes this patch of hair that's all one color, and it makes him look like he has a unibrow, which is super fun. Remember, eyebrows are one of the big ways that you get emotion so how you draw them is really important i'm going to make him look kind of like huh so i'm going to tilt them upwards and you'll notice i'm doing kind of a zigzag line and i'm not trying to fill in all the space remember this is controlled scribbling almost you want to make sure that you leave some room because that's how we're going to mix these crayon colors from here you're going to do around the eye in that same zigzag motion. You're gonna do a nice tight zigzag around his eye. And at first it looks a little bit like eyelashes, but don't fret. It will not when we're all done. Cause you're gonna go all the way around. And I can even go up into that unibrow a little bit. Same over here on this side, trying to show that symmetry And I want to try and make sure that they are very similar in size. So I feel like this needs to come out a little bit more. These need to come up a little bit more. Okay. Now the whole rest of him is going to be this kind of hairy zigzag line. We're going to start with the part that's kind of his inner face um, and make that black. So with this same crayon you're going to go in and you can blend into that eyebrow a little bit try and kind of break up the space so that we're seeing that whole top of his face there and we're going to come down from these little zigzags here and make some that come out of his face don't worry if you get kind of out of where you think the face should be because this is supposed to be fur and it's not going to be uniform. It's not like he goes to get a haircut, right? His hairs are all going to be different lengths. Okay. I'm going to join these two together right here. And do the same on the other side to keep my symmetry. And kind of where you build the rest of the sides from here and the top is up to you. And what colors you use from here. So that inner face is going to be that black fur and we're going to do a little bit right underneath his nose. It'll look like a mustache for right now. It might look like a mustache the whole time and if you love that look then make sure that it shows. And then you're just going to give him a little bit of a smile. Mine's going to have a smile. He's a nice mandrel baboon. If you are really challenging feeling today or if you're feeling like challenging yourself, I should say, you can try and make his mouth open. I am sure that you can find pictures online of one with their mouth open. I am going to connect this all in with a little kind of bottom lip here. You might say it's kind of like a beard, but we're going to add something that's even more beardish in a minute. Remember, I'm not being very controlled with my lines. I want him to look furry and if we color him in completely he won't look like that from here they all seem to have this like yellowish brownish tan goatee so I'm gonna add that in with brown so you can see it and then how you color it from that point is really up to you 
Oh, I hear some quick footsteps, so I apologize in advance if somebody comes down to interrupt us. But I, this is what we're going with, and then I'm going to add in some yellow, and you'll notice I'm taking those yellow lines all the way up into his lip color. Okay, and then you can put in some darker browns if you want. All right, are you sort of seeing it come together here? Here's our example. So far we've got this whole inner face area and the smaller of the two beards. Okay, now you're going to use those colors, brown, black, peach, yellow, maybe white. Um, you might also choose to use gray to kind of give him almost like a lion's mane all the way around the outside. Mixing colors and the way that you're really going to get that point across is to use these big zigzags to show that he is really furry. And then you'll draw another color right on top of it. And that's going to blend those colors together Whoops, for your artwork. Okay. That so far is yellow and brown, and I might add some tan in there. And then when I went around on my example, the very last thing I did was to go back in with a couple of pieces of that black fur to help blend it all together. So one last look at our final product here, and you are absolutely okay to put in some sort of background if you didn't take up all the space. And if you need it, you can put some monkey shoulders down here as well. I hope that you had a fun time drawing this mandrel baboon. And if you have time, I would love for you to put it on Art Sonia. I will call it symmetrical baboons. And then I can see what you have made. Have an excellent day. Until next time.